What an uninspired title. <laughs> Star Trek Picard. Here we are. It's the biannual Star Trek funeral that we always have. That's why I'm, I'm wearing black. <laughs> I should have worn black. I can't even say it was that bad, but... Some people wear a full jean outfit to funerals. Some people. Truckers. Truckers might. Uh, yeah. The old-fashioned trucker funeral. Old-fashioned trucker funeral. Everyone put on your best denim. Head to toe <laughs> denim for the funeral of Bubba Joe. His truck flew off the highway. They placed the, the trucker in the semi. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a hearse, like a yeah. uh, semi painted black. Well, they, they, they park it on the highway and then they, they douse it with like, like booze and set it on fire. Oh, okay. It's a trucker funeral. They, do they throw like porn in there and stuff? <laughs> yeah, 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 porno DVDs. A lot lizards come by to pay their respect. It's very moving. This is weird because it's just one episode and it's not like it's not like it used to be in the old days, Mike, when an episode was a self-contained thing. We essentially watched the first 10 minutes of a feature length like movie. I'm 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 being awfully fucking negative. I shouldn't be because I didn't hate this like I absolutely despised the second season of Discovery. Kind of like an AI sausage. Ew. Right. It was off to a pretty simple start. Yeah. St uh, Star Trek Picard. Um, you got you got the little the dream sequence with Data. As as you predicted, of course. Several everything you predicted was correct. <laughs> you, sa you said that the girl would be Data's daughter. It might not be in the long run. I had a thought because it's kind of it's kind of a dumb idea. What if she's Data's daughter? You said some other things that that were true. Uh, I think, did you say the dog would be called number one? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think I and said that's that. That's so obvious that, of course, they did that. It's cute. T tell, me, tell me something, watching this, because uh, Captain Picard in this seems to just worship Commander Data. Are, are they writing this, like, like, in all seriousness, are they writing this as if Picard had romantic feelings for Data? <laughs> are they? I'm not kidding! Because this man goes to night, he goes to bed every night and dreams of Data. And he doesn't want the dreams of Data to end. And now, and now we have D uh, Data's daughter, right? But we also have like a big Borg ship that shows up at the end. We'll get there. I, I think this is going to work out so that she's not only Data's daughter, but she's also got some of Picard's DNA from the Borg Queen and Picard, thus kind of making her Data and Picard's daughter. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're probably right. It's this, whatever stupid thing you could think of. Picard liked Data. He tolerated him. He respected him. Uh, he wasn't his friend. He kept jo those emotions close to the vest, but really deep down, Mike, he was in love with, he dreams of Data every night. Gravitational fluctuations within acceptable parameters. Flight pattern. I'm sure you have done a complete investigation, and if you wish to continue it, of course you have my full support. But we shall be reaching the Beta Agni system shortly, and I expect you to be rested. The writers know um, as much about Star Trek as Jay does. <laughs> okay? Jay knows that Data was on Star Trek, so Jay thinks that Data and Picard were best friends. Right? No, oh, yes, yes. Jay, is this true? Yep. Um, <laughs> Jordy and Data were best friends, right? Yes. Data spent his free time with everyone on the ship except for Picard. If if you watch the show, the closest relationship that Data had was in fact Jordy. Yes. Right. I consider Jordy to be my best friend. Yeah, but you're not just another electronic system. Thank you, Jordy. Nor are you just another biological organism. He had a special bond with everyone but Captain Picard. <laughs> Pat, Captain Picard was there to do his job. Mike, Mike, 
Captain Picard is the guy that does this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything else you can just make up because, you know, it's never been written before. It's, it's a blank slate. Lieutenant Commander Data, operations officer on the Enterprise was synthetic. Did you ever lose faith in him? Never. Data, you are the key to this entire mystery, and you have done nothing but block my every attempt to solve it. Why are you fighting me? Computer, recognize Picard. Jean-Luc, Alpha 2 clearance. Priority clearance recognition, Alpha 2. Orders regarding command functions are no longer accepted from your present location. The Data I know would never have agreed to be a willing party to Law's plan. I now realize that my life aboard the Enterprise was a waste. I wish I had better news. Commander Data attacked us in the mission scout ship yesterday. Rolf and I have decided to send in an assault team. <laughs> Data, we don't have time for this. <laughs> I cannot help myself. <laughs> I think something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Still, Counselor. Emergency closed. Now show me your warrior fierceness. What else? So, so the writers know. Let's let's go on this theory. Writers know as much as Jay does. Okay. Jay, what else do you know about Star Trek: The Next Generation? Uh, I know Engage. Okay. Well, that hasn't we'll happened. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Well, that, that happens in the preview for. A It'll be. He'll say that like for all time, and then say engage. What else do you know, Jay? Um, uh, Picard drinks tea. What kind of tea? Uh, Earl Grey. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And then the Borg. The Borg. Correct. Correct. Didn't he fuck the Borg queen in that movie? Uh, y no, Data did. Though Picard may have had sex with the Borg Queen off camera before that during the TV series. Yes, it's oh, okay. implied that she was around when he was Locutus mm -hmm. and in secret. Okay. But Data uh, had sexual intercourse with the Borg Queen. Remember she said, was it good for you? Yes. Was that good for you? Uh, and then the audience laughed. The, the things that most people know about Star Trek, like Data, the Borg, are all being kind of shoehorned in here and woven into the story in a ham-fisted, terrible kind of way, which it will develop over 10, 12 episodes. Picard is retired to his vineyard, as expected. And he, he's, he's got some, like, Romulan helpers, and I, I like that. That's a nice nod to the, the Romulus blowing up and... 2009 Star Trek. Like, yes. They have no home now, and now you have Romulans out and about in the rest of the galaxy away from Romulus. Right, and, and they, they are servants to Picard because they appreciated what he did, and this is the primary backstory to the series, or this, this particular opening episode, was that when Romulus' son was about to go Nova, from what I recall, uh, Cybok, uh, Eric Bana, was his name Cybok? He shot Red Goo. That would be just Spock, Mike. No, no, Eric Bana's character. Oh! The bad Romulan from Star Trek You said 09. the Red Matter. I didn't know Spock had the Red Matter that he shot at the supernova. Oh, was the supernova a naturally occurring event? Yes, it was a naturally occurring supernova that made no sense. And Spock was flying around trying to stop it? Yes. Single-handedly? With his Red Matter. Okay. Nobody was helping Spock. No. No other scientists, not the Federation. No. Well, I think the, the only ship fast enough was the one-man ship that had the red matter, I, I think. Okay. Well, that sounds like the, the smudgy, disgusting fingerprints of J.J. Abrams and Alex Kurtzman, <laughs> if you ask yes. me. Yes! Uh, so they knew the, su the, the, the sun was going to go supernova, right? And Romulus is no. The sun somewhere else had gone supernova. It wasn't the. It was the Romulan sun. Oh. They say it in Captain Picard's TV show that okay. we just watched. When you first learned that the Romulan sun was going to explode and the terrible consequences that would bring. One hundred twenty-nine years from now, a star will explode and threaten to destroy the galaxy. 
Never mind that. So it's not, it's not a, a random sun like hundreds of light years away. It's the Romulan sun at the center of their solar system. Yeah. So there's Romulus and Remus and all the different planets of the Romulan star system. And that sun was about to go nova, uh, which I assume Romulans are pretty advanced in their technology. Mm -hmm. If so, not more so advanced than the Federation. I am willing to assume they have the technology to be able to detect it before it happens. The star went nova. All life in this system was destroyed approximately 1,000 years ago. Your observations, your findings. Our scientists reached those same conclusions two years ago. Perhaps, perhaps some people could be evacuated. Evacuated where? Our technology is limited. We're just beginning to launch small missiles. See, that's why I always thought it was an intentional event. Most stars have the phases, you know, where they become a red giant, then they nova, and then they're a, like a, what is it, a white dwarf? Yeah. What's left over, that which eventually dies and well, becomes we, a black hole. Have we seen Romulus' sun? Is it a red giant? No, it was a yellow star. Okay. And it would have been a red giant for 10 million years before it goes like, supernova. J.J. Abrams does not care about space. It's not that he doesn't understand it. He doesn't care to even try to understand it. The star went nova. Okay. So, okay. Th thank you. you. My brain is just having too much trouble <laughs> comprehending basic science. That stars well, just... Well, then, then you should watch Star Trek. Yeah, and the new Star Trek. Yes. S suns just don't go nova like, oh, right? It's a process. Our orders are to proceed to this star. Beta Stromgren. Scientists have discovered it is in the final stages of an alternating cycle of expansion and collapse and will soon result in a supernova. It, w it yeah. does, actually. It's instantaneous when it happens. But there are telltale signs that it's going to happen, and those signs last hundreds of millions of years, right? Yes. Um, so in this J.J. Abrams spin-off universe, which is the Captain Picard TV show, the Romulan sun just went supernova. Yes. And we're going to assume that it, it happened instantaneously or else Rom Romulus probably could have done their own evacuation. Our scientists reached those same conclusions two years ago. They have giant fucking Romulan warbirds and, and tons of ships. They could have done it themselves. They didn't need Captain Picard and his, his Dunkirk Brigade to come and save an entire populace of a planet that is fully capable of doing it themselves, right? The Romulan Star we, Empire is huge. I am going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the, the logistics of evacuating, let, let, let's, let's, let's be conservative and say four billion people, though Romulus probably had more than that. 10,000 warp capable ferries, a mission to relocate 900 million Romulan citizens. Probably more than even the Romulans with their existing giant space fleet could handle, especially considering that that space fleet is probably spread out throughout the entirety of the Romulan star empire. I think the big question is how much time did they have? Did they have an hour or did they have 10 years? We don't know. We don't know. So Picard, without the help of the Federation, because in the J.J. Abrams universe, the Federation are xenophobic racists. Yes. Who refused the help of an enemy. But the Federation understood there were millions of lives at stake. Romulan lives. No. Lives. And I believed we had a profound obligation to give it. Many felt there were better uses for our resources than aiding the Federation's oldest enemy. Well, fortunately, the Federation chose to support the rescue effort. Yes. Initially. It makes you sick, doesn't it? It does. Um, because when a planet says, our sun is going to go nova, can you help us escape? And they go, mm, no. The decision to call off the rescue and to abandon those people we had sworn to save was not just dishonorable. It was downright criminal. The United Federation of Planets is not just Earth. It's about a hundred planets yes. of other alien races that are all, it's like the United Nations. Yes. But Earth runs it, is the, the head of it. That's where, the, that's where the capital is. That's where the capital is. I don't know that I'd necessarily say Earth runs it. Well, the, the president of the Federation uh, is, is often an alien as seen yeah. in other, you know, it's never, not never, but it's not always a human being. It can be an alien 
character. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's based on Earth, but it's a collaborative of many other planets and cultures and races, and they join the Federation. That was one of the many different episodes of Star, Star Trek is, can this planet become a Federation member? Uh, and so when Romulus comes asking for help, instead of just turning their backs on them, they would have helped, and they probably would have also said, squeezed in some diplomatic connections there, some diplomacy, said, hey, you know, you, we'll help you escape. You guys turn, tone down your belligerence a little. Let's sign some treaties. They're always signing treaties. But in this universe, they just said no. I'll, 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 I'll even give the show the benefit of the doubt that maybe Starfleet was putting as much effort as they could, but you still need a lot of civilian ships just to evacuate that many people. I'll give them that. I'll give them that, Mike. The, the thing that infuriates me is that apparently during this evacuation, uh, synthetics, which really, at the time of the next generation, there were only like three of them, Data, uh, Lore, and B4. The Soong androids. So the Soong androids. They're only the Soong androids. Apparently... Don't forget about... Um, Data's fake mother. Don't forget about Data's fake mother, who's also a very convincing android. And Harry Mudd's army of sex slave ladies. <laughs> I forgot about them, yes. There were androids all over the fucking place in old Star Trek, Rich. All right. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll even give the show that then. But apparently during this Romulan evacuation... Yes. Androids blew up Mars. Androids attacked the Utopia Planitia shipyards, which is where Starfleet, which is different than the Federation, although the show probably doesn't know that either. So the synthetic people attack the Utopia Planitia shipyards where Starfleet builds its starships. And they attacked it so violently that it ignited the atmosphere of Mars, which has explosive gas in it. As far as I know, Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere. I'll give the show the benefit of the doubt. And let's say, give them the benefit of the doubt and say like 200 years of building ships on Mars has released a lot of unhealthy gases into Mars' atmosphere. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt again, Mike. What, what I won't fucking forgive them for is that this incident has turned the Federation into a bunch of fucking racist xenophobes who don't like androids or Romulans. Like, we're going to stop evacuating the Romulans because some androids who weren't related to the Romulans blew up Mars. I think Romulans are making androids. And then this Fox News reporter lady... Yes, yes. That's the, that's the, that's the important scene in this. ...is blaming Picard for the rogue androids who blew up Mars, even though Picard had nothing to do with the androids. I thought we were here to talk about a supernova. A group of rogue synthetics dropped the planetary defense shields and hacked Mars's own defense net. Yes. Wiping out the rescue armada and completely destroying the Utopia Planitia shipyard. And so, yeah, Picard's like, I, I'm here to talk about the, uh, what is it, 10th anniversary yeah. uh, of a supernova. And then she's like, she starts hitting him, you know, and he crumbles under the pressure of, of this news reporter who, who hates Romulans. Yeah. yeah. And I get what they're doing. They're doing some modern day politics. Uh, it know, also like, destroys Star Trek. It destroys the, the core ideas of the Federation. And I think like Patrick Stewart was like, he's like the Starfleet or, or the Federation that, uh, that, that we see in Star Trek Picard is very different from the one from the next generation. It's now evil. And, okay, you're talking about America. Star Trek has always done political analogies. Yes, let's talk about that. But they have done it in a way that, oh God. They, they did it in a way where you still had your optimistic future. I always, I, I always love that optimistic future about Star Trek. I, I always have. My favorite fucking moment in Star Trek, I, I don't know if I've told, we've done like five of these Star Trek reviews. Stop me if I've, I've talked about this before, but the, the Abraham Lincoln space episode, as corny as that is, but you have Abraham Lincoln on the bridge of the Enterprise. 
and he uses an outdated offensive term. What a charming negress. To Uhura. To Uhura, and, and Lincoln, even, even fake Space Lincoln being a kind man, looks to Uhura and apologizes. Oh, forgive me, my dear. I know that in my time, some use that term as a description of property. And Uhura is utterly confused by this for a moment. And then she realizes what happened and she laughs. And it's a beautiful fucking moment because Star the Federation, humanity is so good in the future. Racism is so dead, she doesn't even know to be offended by that. The foolishness of my century had me apologizing where no offense was given. We've each learned to be delighted with what we are. And, and it's, it's such a, a thing of the past that it's, it's forgotten. It's, compl like, it's completely forgotten about. It's this wonderful, bright vision of a humanity that, that made it. It's something we can look forward to. It's, ins it fucking, it's inspiring to me. And now we're coming along and there are a bunch of fucking, fucking xenophobes and racists. And fuck that. Fuck that. Stop shitting on Star Trek, man. This is how you tell good sci-fi, Rich. You have a reflection of today's hostile, divisive political environment that we're in. And they, it's it's, it's sci-fi writers that, that are a little too full of themselves. And sci-fi writers I put in quotation marks. Gene Roddenberry, he was a visionary. He had a, this idea like you just described very eloquently. Yeah. And, and that is no more. That died after he died, it started to yeah. crumble yeah. slowly. Uh, I don't know. Did it start with Deep Space Nine being a little too gritty? Yeah. Here's the thing. Deep Space Nine was a good show, but I, I never wanted Deep Space Nine to become the new normal. You know? I'm like, okay, they, they did their, their cynical, dark show. That was good. Now let's get back to it. And no. It just devolved into action schlock. Well, I mean, Voyager maintained the spirit for the most part. For the most part. But you had the, the next-gen movies going on during that, and the next-gen movies were very much in the, the dumb, we only care about action vein. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The ne I wish they never made the next-gen movies. Uh, yeah. I wish it just ended there. So what happens next? Uh, where do we leave off? Uh, well, we were trying, talking about the backstory about how Picard uh, took a convoy of Romulans and everybody, and it was controversial that he decided to help a population of a planet escape a supernova because Romulans have been the sworn enemy. They haven't been a sworn enemy of the Federation in decades. Remember they all teamed up at the end of Star Trek Nemesis? You've earned a friend in the Romulan Empire today, Captain. I hope the first of many. They never had open war either, as far as I know, right? I think there was an Earth-Romulan war like years before Kirk's that was, was that before the Federation, though? Was that like... It was very early in yeah. the Federation. It okay. was like a like hundred years, you know, ago yeah. in, in this timeline. So, yeah, because then they went and disappeared for a very long time, and then they came back. Well, it was a big deal when they appeared in Kirk's time, too, right? right. They're, they're, they're elusive. famously yeah, reclusive. Famously elusive and reclusive. Yeah. Um, and, and then, yeah, they were always kind of sketchy, villainous characters throughout the next gen. But then after that, the Dominion... Well, they, were always, they were always my favorite villains because the Romulans always had fun, clever plots where they would yeah. try and trick people and they had, they had like schemes. Yeah, where they were scheming. We're gonna, we're gonna try and trick the Enterprise to cross the neutral zone so we can claim politically that they're violating our space which will allow us to move into this territory. I always have some kind of clever plot like in, in Star Trek Picard where they're building a giant Borg super weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was happening there? They're building some kind of giant Borg cube, the Romulans. My, my brain shut off at that point. They're build, we don't know exactly what it is. The, the girl, okay, our girl character is named Blal Dash. or Dal? Dash, not Vash. Oh, Dash? Dash. 
Gosh. See, that's the thing. I couldn't understand what anyone was saying while I watched the show. Are you becoming elderly? I think I am because <laughs> she's like, my name is Lash. May I ask your name? Dash. Dash. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And then, and then Picard's talking to the hologram, like, library assistant. And, and he's like, what is the title of this painting? She's like, this painting is called Daughter. Child or Jewish. <laughs> and I'm like, did she? I, I thought she said daughter. And then I thought she said. It's daughter. They said daughter. The painting is daughter. Dodger. That's what I thought she said. <laughs> Then I said, da daughter. It's uh, funny dust, that you have that on Dustin, your <laughs> Daj. What is the character's name? Dash. D a j d a s h dash or like how like, do you spell like it? Like Dodge. I think they were trying to make. I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they were trying to make you think that she might have been Picard's daughter with Vash. His love interest no, from TNG no. for one episode? No, but see, these writers don't remember that. Jay, do you remember Vosh? Uh, no. Okay, they, the writers don't remember that. <laughs> they don't know what that is, Rich. They know Borg Cube, <laughs> Data, Set Phasers to Stun, and Earl Grey T. T, Earl Grey, decap. Earl Grey never fails. Okay. And Romulans, they're, 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 they're gonna shift away from Klingons to Romulans in Picard, at least for the first season. Everyone knows Klingons, but they did that in, in Discovery. Yeah. Jay knows Klingons and Romulans, I'm pretty sure. And Vulcans too, right? You've heard of these Those names. Those are all in the, the Star Trek 09 movie, right? Yes. That's how I know yes. them. Klingons, Romulans, and Vulcans. That's it. I know Spock. Do you know Cardassians? Uh, oh, like like Kim and Chloe. And no. So, girl, Vage, Dajan, Daj, Dijon, Daj, Daj, Daj is is <laughs> living in Boston with her boyfriend, and they're drinking wine. And she just found out she got accepted to the Daystrom Institute because she is she's, she's most likely an android and very smart. Uh, then. What we find out later are Romulans in biker costumes beam into her apartment and kill her boyfriend with a knife and then try to knock her out by hitting her in the head. It's not entirely clear what they were they trying to do. They were probably head. trying to knock her out, but they were also like hacking into her brain or something. They were very inefficient for having a complete and total uh, surprise advantage. Right? They could have set their phasers to stun, beamed in and shot them both in less than a second. But instead they go through this whole rigmarole of throwing knives around the room and trying to put a bag over her head in the fucking 24th century? Why use, gun, why use stun settings when you can just violently stab people, Mike? It's far more exciting when you violently stab people. Uh, and then they, they put a bag over her head, I guess to, Suffocate her? Knock her out. Maybe the bag has they like didn't chloroform want her to in it. see what they were doing. It has ether in it? Or chloroform? <laughs> They're going. Are they, are, they, are they like hipster assassins that use like two, two, three hundred year old methods of knocking people out? Even though they can beam into the room instantly and stun someone. Uh, so they put a bag over her head, but she activates. And then we have a fight scene that we watch for 10 minutes that's ultimately pointless. She then has a dream, or she sees Picard in her mind's eye. She uh, has a vision of Picard. Yeah, and then that coincides with Picard being interviewed by Fox News, uh, where they, they, they do a gotcha interview, and they start asking him why he tried to rescue people. <laughs> and then he has to explain to the news reporter that Romulans are people too, and they're not just mud creatures that Fox News despises. I hate what they've done to the Federation um, so much. Uh, so then she goes to Picard for help and Picard then randomly speculates that she could possibly be a robot. I think the attack on you might have acted as some kind of wake up call. That damn ringing, answer it, will you? Like a positronic alarm bell. No. Be quiet. 
quiet. Do you think I'm crazy? No. Do you believe me? No. Well, Picard has sexual dreams about Data, and Data's painting, and Data's painting a lady in a in a in a in a in a gown standing on the rocks, looking over the ocean, who doesn't have a face. Yeah, he knew when he woke up. Okay. Yes, and okay. then he and he has a painting by Data. There's two copies, and one that uh, has the face of the girl. So the girl then goes to Picard and uh, tracks him with her brain. Yeah. Because Picard says, you can't track me because you don't have security clearance. I guess Picard probably has a microchip in his head now. By the way, Data knowing what his daughter was going to look like 30 years in the future, that is one of those things that's never going to be explained because Alex Kurtzman. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> uh, so she goes to Picard and says, help me, Obi-Wan Picard. You're my only hope. Uh, I saw you in my dream. I saw you on Fox News, and you hold the keys. And he goes, you're Data's daughter. If you are who I think you are, you are dear to me in ways that you can't understand. My very best lover, I mean friend, who I constantly obsess about 30 years later, who he, I didn't give a shit about for the seven years I've served with him. And then he tells this girl he just met, I'm going to stay with you forever. Yes. And protect you always. Yes. I will never leave you. Because you're Data's daughter and you're very special. Didn't he tell Data to disassemble LOL? I have decided to allow my child to choose its own sex and appearance. Commander Data, at your convenience, I would like to talk with you in my ready room. Counselor. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, he was, he was pissed when Data made LOL. I insist we do whatever we can to discourage the perception of this new android as a child. It is not a child. It is an invention. Data made Lal in secret, remember? Yeah. He just did it. And then he's like, Counselor Troy, come here. Look at this. And she's like, oh my God, the ramifications of what you've done, Data. And then Picard's like pounding his fist on the table, like, how dare you? Then, then the bad guys show up. And can I say, I'm pleasantly surprised that they weren't Section 31. Because New Trek has a fucking hard on for Section Thirty One. Because that's the fan base now. <sighs> Violence, violent hard ons is the fan base. That's what they call themselves now. <laughs> Star Trek Not, fans. Have we've just gone, gone from Trekkies. <laughs> long gone are the simple days of Trekkie and Trekker. That debate. Uh -huh. Now they call themselves violent hard ons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you a violent hard on? Yeah, um, I am. Did you watch fucking Picard last night? Yeah! Come on over, bro! It's so shameful. Anyway, okay, back to Star Trek Picard. <laughs> the Romulans show up to do something with Daj. By the way, those could be Section 31 Romulans. Don't discount that. <laughs> that would be like the, the dumbest least knowledgeable about Star Trek thing to do ever. Yes, so yes that's yes. definitely going to happen. They're, they're now Section 31 Romulans. Yeah, why not? Let them in. They're defector. The Romulans, the Romulans have no home, right? So Starfleet recruited a hundred Romulans that were like really good super secret agents, right? Because that's what Romulans do. That's going to be the reveal. They're former Romulan secret agents, but since Romulus blew up, may as well join our secret agency. That the, 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 the Federation will secretly have recruited Romulans into Section 31. Ah, uh, yeah, to okay. To do some kind of bidding. Yeah, we can't get away from Section 31, not Alex Kurtzman. No, don't, and plus they're having a spinoff show. So don't dis discount anything that's too stupid. <laughs> so, okay, Romulans in biker costumes attack Picard so and the little girl. Picard and Daj do the most logical thing, so they run up to the top of the building. <laughs> Yes. And, and Picard is trotting up some stairs, and we only see him from behind, which, which makes me think they used stunt double to have Picard jog up five stairs. Uh, uh, well, we could probably find this out by looking at IMDb credits, but I'm going to guess you're right, because... And that's not... That's not even a knockout. I mean, he's it's a 79-year-old man. It's not, yeah. Um, uh, and also, you know, he could trip running up even three steps, fall, injure his knee, break his hip. Yeah. And we're not making old folks jokes, but it's possible it could happen. And that, uh, you know, that would halt the production. So very likely. Uh, other than scenes where he's standing, 
and or sitting. If he has to do physicality, he, they probably had a stunt double. What if he has to sit up? I guess Is that CGI? Throw his, he throws back he out. He throws back out. Yeah, it's impossible. Um, yeah, there, so, there's like there's like handlers that actually lift him up, but they, they take them out digitally. Let, let's talk about the scene. Yeah, okay. This logical scene. Picard and 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 Zsa 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 Picard and Dodge. I'll never remember that name. It's so forgettable. Picard and Dodge are sitting outside of Starfleet Archive. It's, it's, a, a, it's some a, kind of museum -y archive thing. A wing of Starfleet oh, Academy. Oh, can I can I say in Picard's little section of that archive? Why would he keep that stupid fucking Captain Picard Day banner when he fucking hates <laughs> children? The archivist kept it. Okay. Oh, you mean like on the ship? Like Why would what? Picard have even kept that long enough for it to end up in the Picard archive? Here's an answer. Uh-huh. Counselor Troy took it down after Picard stormed out of the little thing <laughs> and folded it up, rolled it up, and put it either in her quarters or in storage. And then, I guess, when the Enterprise D crashed in flames, <laughs> somebody got it? <laughs> Toss the curl and Nescar out to the side. He made sure to say that Captain Picard Day better. Okay, Dodge and Picard are outside the archives, the Federation archives, uh, and they're sitting very clear by doors inside a building, which probably has many other people, maybe security officers. They're, they're in San Francisco in the heart of Starfleet. Pres presumably right next to a building that's full of Starfleet personnel. Yes, and, and, and she says, oh my God, they're coming to get us. I can sense them with my android brain somehow. And she says, come on, 79-year-old man, let's run up a flight of stairs to a wide open rooftop where we could be visible from anywhere. I'm gonna give the show credit for addressing that because Picard barely makes it up the stairs and says it. I give them credit for not treating Picard like a young action hero. Oh yeah, yeah. But the purpose of going up the stairs to a rooftop? Was, None. Did they have a spaceship there? I didn't see one. Was Picard's shuttle there that he, he came down to the Starfleet headquarters? I did not see one. I presumed he just beamed over there. Yeah, okay. What was on the roof then? Nothing. A stairwell that they could kick someone off of. <laughs> Good answer, because that's the correct one. <laughs> um, so, oh, th so then, so then Dodge turns into Neo from the Matrix. Yes, yes. And starts flying in the air. Oh, she runs up the stairs like she, a Jedi. No, she doesn't run up the stairs. She jumps up the stairs like Neo from the Matrix. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then she kicks everyone's ass um, in a scene that goes on way too long. The Romulan agent, uh, a Romulan guy in a biker helmet is exposed because his glass breaks on his, his yeah. biker helmet. Uh, well, that's and, the big Romulan reveal. Yes, and he spits, he bites a cyanide capsule essentially, but it's acid that melts his face and he spits it on her. She starts to melt and he also overloads his phaser rifle, which causes her to melt and start on fire and explode. Yes. Anyway, then, then Picard goes to the Daystrom Institute. Yes, in Japan. Where he meets not Bruce Maddox from that old TNG episode, but his assistant. Yes, they reference Bruce Maddox, which was interesting. May I present Commander Bruce Maddox? Commander? And this is where we find out that she was cloned from one of Data's positrons. The girl was? Yes. Well, it's, it's, it's speculated. It's not confirmed. Okay. He, at, well, remember, he shows up and the first thing he says to the lady, her name is what? Like Ellen or? Whatever her name is. Oh, Agnes, how can I help you? He says, I want to create an android that's all flesh and blood. You can tell me if it is possible to make a sentient android out of flesh and blood. That makes no sense. And I'm like, isn't that a, basically a person? <laughs> And then she laughs and says, no, maybe a thousand years from now. Oh, like, God, then she misunderstood. He was just trying to get her in bed. <laughs> 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 
Just for a nap, though. <laughs> um, uh, so then she explains B4 to the audience that B4 was a bad copy of data, failed version of data. Oh, oh, that's the other thing. From the earlier part of the show, I said there's another thing that you will accurately predict. Okay. And I said they can't, she can't be Data's daughter because Data exploded into it. And you said, well, someone went out in all the debris <laughs> and found all found pieces of him. <laughs> You can do anything. So, because at the end, they describe that weird Borg cube that is being built. Mike, Mike, if you want to know what stupid writers are going to do, you ask a stupid person. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you exactly what something stupid is going to be written. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what that is. Rich, they, they need you for that writer's room. They just, they, when they, they hit, a, hit a wall, like, they just look at you, and you just say the stupidest thing that you could think of. And then they go with it. So, so that weird Borg cube that is being built by Romulans? Yes. Which I predict will be a giant Borg cube to revenge on the Federation at the end of this season <laughs> because of their reluctance to save the Romulan people. Uh, Any I was, money. I was thinking they were going to use the technology to reignite their star. But no, you're right. It's going to be a giant super weapon that will wreak havoc upon the Federation. Because they want to get their re revenge. <laughs> So they're, they're slowly building a Borg cube because after, after the, the Riemann ship exploded with Shinzon on it mm -hmm. and data, they went, because it says Romulan Reclamation Facility or something like that, they went and they scooped up all the, all the debris from that battle and they found bits of data, literally, data himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, they found his little, I don't know, what they made up something, but data's molecules or some shit like that, right? Oh, po the, the positron? A, a positron. They're going to clone a, a Data's daughter and it can only make twins from one of Data's positrons. Yeah. A positron is just a, like a particle in an atom. Okay. It doesn't have like DNA in it that you could clone an android from. Yeah, it exists, but it does now. But so it they does found, now because Alex Data's, Kurtzman yeah. is writing this show. They found Data's positrons. I don't know how that relates to a Borg cube. They do show Borgs in this, and we know Seven of Nine appears. I think, here's something stupid, the Borg are helping the Romulans build the Borg cube, because they want to get revenge on Picard and Earth <laughs> too. Are the Borg trying to make a race of super androids? Sure, why not? So they can yeah, be even why? more androidy? Yeah, yeah. An and a, a, a Borg android Romulan hybrid. That will fight Captain Picard at the end of the show? No, no, a race of them. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, to invade Earth. Well, they're going to have one, like, main one that controls all of the smaller sure. Borg, Romulan, Data, Androids. That 10,000 Starfleet shuttlecrafts have to <laughs> shoot lasers at? <laughs> no, um, it has the cunning, you know, of a Romulan, the intelligence and cunning of a Romulan, the, the strength of a Borg, and the, the indestructibility of an of a Android. Okay. So it has all these three components. They all want revenge on Starfleet and Picard. And they want, oh, oh, no, I know why. The Borg cube wants to blow up Earth. That's the Borg cube flown by Romulans. Uh -huh. Wants to blow up Earth because Earth didn't help them. But also the Borg want to get Picard back as Locutus to lead the Borg into a new age. So they both have similar goals. So they decide to work together to build a giant Borg cube manned by Romulan Borg android hybrids. <laughs> I love it. Okay. It's the dumbest idea we could think of. It's definitely gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she was working on a Romulan Borg cube being under construction, but I'm sure Seven of Nine's gonna know all about it. And she's gonna go tell Picard, don't go on this mission, Picard. They're out to get you to bring you back to be Locutus again, because remember Locutus? Is Picard going to fight Locutus? Is Locutus going to be the mastermind behind this? Oh, oh, like, 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 like old Arnold fighting CGI young yes. Arnold? Yes. They, they, There's a time It's to a just... trap. It's a trap to lure Picard out from Earth. Because remember, he said no one could track me. <laughs> so it's a, it's a trap to get him out to get his DNA to make a clone Locutus. 
<laughs> a young version, and it'll be a CGI Locutus. They'll clone it with the Android DNA. Yes! <laughs> like an Android Locutus Borg Picard. Super Locutus. <laughs> and it'll be indestructible, and they'll have to fight it at the end. <laughs> and the big ending, he'll say, what, what will he say, Rich, as the camera dollies in on him? Oh God, I got nothing. What is, what is the big action line, Resistance like? is futile. Oh yeah, the obvious. But it was so obvious, I missed it. Yeah. It'll be Picard and his like ragtag group, group of characters, and they'll, they'll all have like ninja swords and, and space guns. And then Locutus will have that, the big Borg arm. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a CGI no, they, young, younger, younger Patrick Stewart. They can't use a lightsaber because it's not the Star Wars IP, but it'll be like a lightsaber whip that Locutus will be just waving around. <laughs> like a Ferengi laser whip? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but they don't know what that is. It'll just be a laser whip. <laughs> with the Borg invented. <laughs> Write down laser whip. <laughs> Star Trek writer's room. Do you think they're watching this, this episode right now with We're, like notepads, legal pads, like writing down laser whip, clone Locutus as super weapon? Producers watch us, producers and writers looking for ideas. And they're too stupid to realize that we're making fun of stupid ideas. Are we responsible for Star Trek Discovery too? Yeah, I think we're responsible for all the horrible things that have ever happened. Oh Mike. no! Oh, we have ruined our own childhoods, Mike. It's a self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy. It's the first ten minutes of a movie, basically. Maybe it's maybe it won't suck. Maybe. Engage. Ha, 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 ha.